check this out. I'm going to write an entire backend here with a single prompt. So what I have here is a Next.js project that's running. It's completely blank and you'll see in Superbase I have an empty project, okay? So what I'm gonna do is show you this file. I have a backend markdown file that shows in 264 lines here how I like my backend setup. So I can use this between all of my projects and it's awesome. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go Command I and a cursor composer and what I'm going to do is say set up my backend and I'm going to tag the file. We're gonna hit return and cursor composer is gonna take care of everything I need. So as you can see, if we go into the control panel view here to get a little bit uh, more view for you guys, it's going through, it's doing all the work on all the different files that I need. And it's doing that work according to how I specified how I like my project set up in that markdown file, okay? So it's basically referencing the entire file and it's doing all of the work for me that I need here, okay? So you can see we're getting queries written, we're getting um, a little test form here that we can try. We're getting all these different things, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit accept uh, there's a few things I need to do here, so I actually do need to install the packages, of course, and then we're going to actually need to make sure that we migrate our um, migrate our database so that actually gets applied to our Superbase project. Um, but you can see we got the exact scripts that we're going to need for that right here, uh, so this is a very easy uh, step here. So you can see we just migrated that, uh, or we generated the migration rather. Uh, so if I go into the DB file here, you'll see we have that SQL migration that awesome creates a table and it applied that successfully to our Superbase project. So if we go back in here, you should now see that we have a uh, example table. So what we should be able to do now is if we refresh our app, we should hopefully, it looks like uh, examples table is not defined. It looks like maybe we got uh, a little bit of an error here. Uh, so sometimes, again, Cursor Composer can get things wrong. Uh, so it looks like it forgot to import that here for us. Uh, so let's just go ahead and fix that manually. Again, all these AI features, they typically get you to be about 80% of the way. Uh, and you kind of have to go and do the last little bit here. So like in, in this component, we have to add a little use client here. Okay, so we had uh, just two really, really basic errors uh, that we we're able to get solved really quickly. So like, let's click on this get all examples here and see if that does anything. Um, it's looking like it should, well, I suppose we're not gonna actually have uh, an example here. So what we can do here, we can go back into uh, composer view here and say, uh, in the page, add a test form so we can test creation. Okay, we wanna make sure that this is all actually hooked up in the UI. And all we have to do is just jump right back into that composer session and ask for what we need here. And it's gonna go ahead and handle that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and save as opposed to accept. So I do, you know, my name is McKay. Uh, we'll say my age is, uh, we're gonna say I'm 567. And I'm gonna say my email is I'm awesome at, at awesome.com. Okay, so let's see if this creates. Okay, I click the button. Let's go into our database. Looks like it's working. Awesome. And then if I hit uh, get all examples, we should hopefully be logging uh, examples, which uh, I'm going to have to open up my developer tools. But it looks like we did, in fact, uh, get a retrieval here that's logging all this successfully. And we're getting an array back with that data. Okay, awesome. So literally in like two minutes using Cursor Composer, I was able to set up my entire backend and get that entire thing connected. Um, so let's accept that. And now you can see, uh, again, if we run through and, and go through control panel here, we got like, let's see, four, uh, six, we got like 10 files here that it created. So it did everything we needed. We only had like those two really, really minor errors where we just had to add a use client. I could probably even improve the prompt a little bit more. Uh, I could probably just fix this import issue as well in the prompt. So again, the quality of your outputs are largely gonna depend on the quality of your inputs. And because the, uh, if I don't go to command view, I go to setup view here because my prompt here uh, was so sufficient, it was able to kind of one shot pretty much handle that entire thing just with a few uh, written lines of instructions and examples, everything. So this is a uh, technique that I use all across my apps. You'll see I even have like a setup front end thing that does a lot of different front end setups. Um, so I've, I've posted a couple times about using reusable prompt uh, files with Markdown to, to be able to do those tasks. And so anytime I'm like starting a new project or I need to implement something, that's usually the format I use. I usually try and build out a uh, prompt. So it's really great for usable tasks, can handle a lot of complexity. Uh, and that is how you can add a back into your project in a single prompt.